Bamboo's building build plate list blobs blistering builders and T1 Pro trees tumbling. All this and more. Print Fix Friday, episode 174. Let's get into it. Starting off with my buddy Phil from Ember Prototypes, who you might remember from a previous podcast episode, we'll card to it, where we talk all about making custom build plates. And uh, apparently, if you're good at making custom build plates, you might not be the best at remembering to put those custom build plates onto your 3D printer. It, this, to me, kind of begs the question, should 3D printers be able to detect, especially if they're using the load cells, right? The nozzle probing on a machine that they should be able to detect that something is squishy. This is a P1S from Bamboo Lab that unlike the X1 Carbon does not have the ability to detect build plates. That is actually one of the nicer features of the X1 Carbon and as long as you don't turn it off, uh, you should be able to ensure that you always have a print on a build plate. Gonna give credit where it's due though, it did absolutely get a little bit stuck down to that magnet. Most likely that upper part of your magnet is toast, but come on Phil, out of everyone I expect you to have not one but at least three build plates on there with all these different logos. No, it's a totally honest to goodness error it's happened to me before and i'm sure it's happened to some of you before and I, I don't know it seems like this could be a relatively easy firmware fix that if your load cell feels a bit of a squish then you know it feels something harder it should say hey um there might not be a build plate or the build plate is dirty do you mind checking on it it seems like that could be a pretty easy thing to do in firmware but hey I'm not bamboo, and this hasn't happened to me in a long time. The last time it did happen to me it was on one of the Mark 3s's, and those use inductive probes. So it didn't matter anyways. It was totally fine. Nozzle probing obviously matters quite a bit, but then you have machines like the Mark 4s, the Mark 4, and the XL from Prusa that all can actually print on cardboard. Their, their load cells are sensitive enough to be able to print onto cardboard. It's kind of cool. Not that I've ever needed a print on cardboard, but you know, best way to stop this is to always check to make sure that you have a build plate. I know a lot of people love using the cloud features and things like that. And if you're going to use the cloud features, take a peek on the camera, make sure there's a build plate on there. And if there is it, go ahead and toss one on. But we would say, hey, if you're having an issue seeing your build plate, go get a custom one from Ember Prototypes. But they're currently taking a bit of a break, so stay tuned. Check out Ember Prototype's website for any updates and to, you know, the custom build plates that Phil is doing. Because they're honestly really cool, and I love all the different ones that we have. It's a great way, especially for small businesses, to put their logo on the bottom of the pieces that they make. But I will say, since we do often use third-party build plates in our bamboo, I've turned off the build plate recognition on the X1 Carbon. Hasn't happened to me yet, but I'm a bit of a stickler for making sure that build plates are on machines. And because we had that machine fully air-gapped for various reasons, of which many of you are aware, and if you're not, I'll card to a random one above. For our machine specifically, I just go and I, I check it. I clean the build plate, always make sure the build plates are cleaned with Windex in between prints. So, love to know if this has ever happened to you. Obviously, the best thing to do with the Blob of Doom is to, well, check out the next fail, because we're going to get into it a lot more. Speaking about failures, my name's Grant, and this is Print Fix Friday, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. And if you're dealing with some issues, you can reach out to us on all the social media, slide into those DMs, though I mostly monitor Twitter and Blue Sky, if that happens to be your thing, or, like one of our final fails today, you can just uh, add us on YouTube in a video. We'll take a look at it. This one was sent to me by multiple people. We've got StarkeyProduction.store here on Instagram. Let's see what they got going on. Hey, baby. Oh, that's smoke. That is smoke. All 3D Print Talk, I have a gunk monster on my nozzle, and it's been a while since I've had to deal with this. Like, that's just an impressive amount of... Ah. Uh... Hot. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be hot. Blobs of doom get covered all over your hot end. Don't touch it! 
Also, please don't do this either. As you're prying on the hot end with those pliers, we've got a huge risk that you just snap the heat break right off the machine. And while this isn't A1 Mini, it's a relatively easy thing to fix, it's not on a lot of other printers. So I can't recommend doing this. The best thing that we recommend doing, warm up the printer, let everything get nice and toasty, and then pull it off. But let's see how they get about this. Nope, dangerous. Ooh, baby, baby. That's where your wires are. Don't do that, please. Especially with no glove. Please wear protection when you do this. It sucks to get burned by a hot end. Baby, baby. Oh, that's smoke. That is smoke. That is smoke. That is smoke. That is smoke. Ah! Nope, gotta bleep that. That is smoke. Holy shit. And that. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. All right, classic blob of doom here. We can see the actual front cover of the machine popped off. No big deal. That goes right back on. The sock is gone. Consider that a total loss. And we've got filament all surrounding the machine. This is a topic that I kind of want to talk about. And I want to see if you guys want to hear more about it. But uh, Vision Miner recently had a little video that they put up called The Bamboo Effect, which is a clip from one of their podcasts where they talk about people that are getting used to machines that are just click, print, go, that don't have a lot of experience working on the machines. Because we're seeing a lot of these kind of elementary failures occur on bamboo machines, and I don't think it's the machine's fault per se. I think it also has a lot to do with the type of people that are buying a bamboo. Now, to be clear... There's nothing wrong with that. Everyone's got to start somewhere. But I think that the, some education is required here. This is why we do Print Fix Friday. This particular one, trying to pry it off like that can cause way more problems than it solves. Let it warm up on its own. This particular one might not have fallen through. We can see the blob was really covering the hot end there. And in that case, try to take off the duct. I don't know how it works on the A1 or the A1 Mini. I don't have those machines. And this is not too difficult of a thing. Patience is a virtue here. Be patient with these machines. And yeah, I want to know your thoughts on should we do something about this whole idea of people coming into the industry to utilize the machines but have no way to fix them or no idea on how to fix them. And I think they got lucky here, right? I know the A1 and A1 Mini are a little delicate on that hot end because they have that clip system that can be a little finicky from time to time. And there's still a bunch of plastic left. Let's see how the rest of this plays out. No, this is, this is so bad. I've seen worse. Ugh. I need the nozzle to be hot to clean it, but my printer is actively smoking. Don't actually know if it's smoking. It could be a moisture thing, but let's just assume it is actually smoking. And it could be, you could have it hot enough that the PLA is starting to uh, smoke a little bit. It's no big deal. You've got like plastic all over the bits that get well over 200 degrees celsius of course it's gonna smoke a little bit it's fine this is normal and this is the case where i would be taking the flush trim cutters they're just way easier to use in my particular instance some people like the needle nose pliers make sure whatever you use not to crimp or cut wires you don't want to be that guy who had to solder things on a live stream because he accidentally cut his wires i'm not referencing myself for any particular reason Act actively emitting smoke it's fine well, that printer's out of order for now until i can go get some wire brushes to clean it up great bit of thing here the wire brushes get some wire brushes when it comes to wire brushes we recommend the firearm cleaning brushes which are, are really really nice because they've got one side that is a much softer metal because they're longer and then another side that are stiffer these are relatively cheap we'll link to some in that description down below if you want to pick some up and because the actual handle is normally made of nylon they're good for high temp applications as well where you can get to the nozzle and if you got some extra gunk on it you can go for the stiff bristles and really get in there just be careful with these because of course it is metal so you can short out connections be very very careful and if you're not certain power down the printer real quick go ahead and clean it as it's cooling down 
turn it back on, warm it back up, lather, rinse, repeat until everything is clean. If you have any other tips for getting good build plate adhesion, let us know in those comments. But that's often what is the problem here. If you do encounter a blob, you don't got to call the Ghostbusters or anything. You just got to make sure that we heat up the printer, let it all fall off normally. You can cut off some of the big bits where it makes sense, but gravity is your friend here. Let it do its job. Last but not least, we got a fan over here. This is Gets 3D Printing that said, at 3D Musketeers, any idea why these tree supports fail constantly on the FL Sun T1 Pro? I've slowed it down, re-leveled the printer, cleaned the bed, made the brim bigger on supports, and changed to strong from organic, and it still will hit and knock them over. So let's look at our organic support. Let's see what it looks like. Yep. Okay. Very, very typical. So uh, let's see what happens on this part. Okay. So when you're bridging across a smooth gap like that, organic supports are not the right supports to use. Snug supports are often the right supports to use, but let's go ahead and ignore that because the actual problem is my printer's smacking my friggin' supports. Z-hop, 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 Z-hop. When in doubt, add Z-hop. On the T1 Pro, a machine that we haven't used, FL Sun, want to check out your deltas, send them over. We want to see them. People have them. We want to help them out, get some good profiles built and things like that. But on this particular machine, you want to make sure you have enough Z because deltas tend to move very, very quickly, right? The actual motion system of a delta printer was originally like used in pick and place machines and not for 3D printers because the end effect or the actual thing that moves on a delta printer can be crazy lightweight. And because you're using a fulcrum based system with arms that go up, it's math that allows it to move very, very quickly. And if you don't pick it up and then move it, then set it back down, you're going to run into things. You're going to have a bad time. I think that's what's going on here. Let me see if we have any other occurrences in the videos. Another instance of the organic support, and they just completely got knocked off. Yeah, I think Z-Hop's going to help here. Support found a way, though. I'm just saying, support found a way in that one. That one was still a success in my book. If you are dealing with organic supports constantly getting knocked over, you can look at adding a bigger brim to your parts, but you can also look at adding a second perimeter to make them stronger. But if Z-Hop doesn't work, we need to look at our first layer and make sure that that first layer is really gripping onto the part. Yeah, I can see this happening all the time. Okay. On instances like this, where you know you've got a lot of small organic supports, you can actually insert a one layer thick, because it's a Delta printer, cylinder that takes up most of the build plates so that everything is built on that cylinder. Theoretically, should it knock stuff over? Yes, you'll have to cut it off your part. Too bad. But it's an old school technique. It's like a mouse ear, right, for a brim. But using a real part rather than a brim ensures that Everything is very well connected together. Okay, so we saw some areas where very clearly it was hitting and breaking the supports. This is absolutely going to be a Z-Hop issue. If it is not a Z-Hop issue, you've got an oozing issue, which is another common thing that we deal with on deltas that tend to be Bowden machines rather than direct drive, where the extruder is separate from the actual hot end itself and there have a Bowden tube in between them. So that's a very common issue that we would see on deltas. If that is occurring, cut your temperature down just a little bit. Unfortunately, the camera in these machines are not all that high quality, so we can't really get a good picture of exactly what is going on. Add a little bit of extra Z-Hop. It will obviously add, you know, a couple of milliseconds here and there, but I'd rather my prints take a few extra minutes than have them take another overnight job to just get them done. You know what I mean? I hope this help gets 3D printing. Let me know in those comments. Thank you for tagging us in a video. It actually shows up on the back end of our YouTube channel where we can see when people tag us in descriptions. So thanks for doing that. It's a great way to get our attention. Of course, using the hashtag print fix means that we get to see it as well. And if you do want to support the efforts that we are doing here and get your name listed in lights right next to me, you got to join the $5 tier and higher via the links in that description 
down below. And at the $10 tier now, you get to come hang out in our private Discord server where uh, we probably could have caught this way earlier and helped you out. And hey, 10 bucks a month goes a long way to getting your prints back up and running. And by and large, especially if you're running a small business or an Etsy store or whatever, you can absolutely benefit by being a part of our awesome community. But if you do enjoy these types of videos and you want to see more of them, you can click right below me to see the rest of the Print Fix Friday series. And hey, if you're looking for something a little bit different right next to that will be our coverage from the Sanjay Mornma Rep Rap Festival 2024. Yes, those videos are already starting to trickle out. That is all I have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your love. Don't, don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. We recommend firearm cleaning brushes. Uh, they tend to be relatively long. You've got a side that has really short, stiff bristles and another side that's got a lot denser, easier to come. Nope.